Uh, let's go back to the Gilly Crane hotline, uh, 954-9-3-1-9-5-4-5438 or 954 lift 954 lift is the number as uh, we go to Will Rab. He's the play-by-play voice for WCDT, sports director for WCDT. Uh, he called the an exciting Franklin County Columbia game tonight. Will, uh, you guys trail going into the fourth quarter, but you but uh, the Rebels got it done. Yeah, it was a really I would say weird ball game, but but thrilling and twist and tur- turns, kind of like a really good movie. Uh, Franklin County races out to a 21-9 to lead at the half. Then Columbia gets the ball. They won the toss in the first. They go down and score. And then they tried an onside kick, which is kind of Franklin County's Achilles heel versus Columbia. They get a little discombobulated uh, the last couple of years, aren't really sure what to do. Lions get the ball, score, take the lead for the first time. But credit to Franklin County, they responded. Uh, after giving up 13 unanswered points, uh, they would rally and they would score 15 unanswered uh, of their own and, and get the win uh, tonight. Another huge uh, performance from Neil and Gene. I have a feeling uh, friends over at the Tennessee and might nominate him uh, for athlete of the week again, Dennis. 231 yards, all are total. 186 passing, 145 rushing, five total touchdowns, three on the ground, two in the air. And uh, he was phenomenal. Franklin County as a team had 431 total yards of offense, so he had uh, over half of it. Uh, we're talking to Will Rabb of uh, WCDT. His uh, Franklin County Rebels get a win over Columbia. And it's what's well, become a pretty good rivalry between these two contests. But uh, since it is a region contest, this was crucial. I don't think the loser of this game had a chance to make it to the playoffs, and so I believe that the uh, the path to the playoffs is still open for Franklin County. I think Columbia's hopes died tonight, don't you? Yeah, and, and just going back to the rivalry for a minute, we were looking at some notes. We had some really good stats of the all-time series with these teams. Franklin County and Columbia, the second longest annually, continually played uh, matchup according to all records. We've got to go back and double check on Lincoln County because Frank, Franklin County and Fayetteville, Lincoln County, whatever incarnation they've been, they've been playing for a long time. But they've played every year since 1954. So these teams really do have a lot of history uh, behind them. But like you said, probably a region, region eliminator. Certainly Columbia's eliminated at 0 3. I think Franklin County maybe would have had it outside shot with Lincoln County and Shelbyville still there, but I, I think you're in a, Franklin County's in a much better place at two and two in the region heading into the open date, and then they'll have probably another playoff eliminator on the uh, third Friday in October uh, versus uh, Lincoln County on senior night. Uh, Will, I, uh, you talked about Neil and Gene and, and his, his contributions. Who else was a big contribution for you uh, tonight for, uh, for Franklin County? Big contributor. Couple, yeah, yeah. A couple of uh, big uh, receptions on the night. One for Michael Fuquay. He's actually a running back, but for all the, the fans out there, if you're familiar with, Al, with what Alvin Kamara does, he's very much an Alvin Kamara type. He's, a, he's one of the fastest kids in the state. Uh, in track, had a 66-yard touchdown haul that was really probably only a 25-30 yard pass that he added another 40 yards to. Uh, so he had a, he had a good uh, touchdown catch. Uh, Marquis Tolliver, who's just a sophomore, uh, had another big touchdown grab, probably 65-ish yards uh, in the in the second half to give Franklin County the lead in the fourth quarter uh, to answer back real quick. And then when they needed. Uh, to shut it down, uh, they were able to go to their uh, power back, Dakota Wagner, and, and I don't have his rushing total off the top of my head, uh, but I'm sure he was over 100 yards as he got a steady, uh, as Columbia got a steady die to number 24 to grind out the clock. Franklin County uh, took the ball back with the 4.47 to go and uh, drove down the field to uh, get the uh, two-touchdown lead uh, at the end of the game, so a really impressive drive there, a lot of heavy dose of uh, Wagner uh, once again. So Franklin County is really clicking at all cylinders. Uh, Gene's making a lot of plays, but there's a lot of other weapons that if you choose to 
the key on him, uh, that he's just going to distribute the ball elsewhere. So uh, uh, it's exciting times in Franklin County as they're on the verge of the playoffs and some, some luck goes their way in their final two games. And not just make the playoffs, but I, I think maybe make some noise, too. They're, they're shaping up as one of the better teams in their region. Uh, next week you step out of region, you, you take on uh, the Open Academy uh, out of by uh, Tennessee. Uh yeah, hey, the, does the bye week come at a good time for the Rebels? I, th- I think I think it does. Uh, number one, next week's fall break in the county. Oh, and yeah. I never particularly like having to play a game when you're on an open week. It was bad enough that today was fair day and they let all the kids out of school, so you had to figure out how to track them down. Uh, but it comes at a good time because I think regardless of what would have happened tonight, Franklin County went. Franklin County ended up winning, but if they would have lost, they get some extra time to get their mind right heading in uh, to the game uh, with Lincoln County and uh, get kind of healed up. The injury bugs bit Franklin County the last couple of weeks uh, with some guys getting banged up, and so they can get healthy for those final two regular season games. And, again, you know, we have to see what happens, knock on wood and get some luck, and they'll get healthy for the playoffs as well. All right, Will, uh, what are you guys doing next week for a broadcast? Are you guys going to do Grundy County? Uh, so, uh, on the air, on uh, AM 1340 and FM 106.9 in Winchester, and on the TuneIn app and our main feed, uh, we're going to have uh, Huntland and Moore County, because that's a blood, hate, rivalry, and a yep. good region game. So, uh, Ricky Chips and Evan Harris are going to call that one. And then on our website, on our secondary stream, uh, Al and I are going to Grundy County uh, to uh, uh, check out what the uh, Yellow Jackets and uh, Coach uh, Hayworth are up to. And I apologize. No, actually, I do remember uh, Grundy County is hosting Upperman, so a very stiff uh, test uh, for the Yellow Jackets, the Yellow Jackets versus the Bees on WCDTRadio.com for the next week. Etymology 101 next week on WCDT Stream. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you guys get in all of your insect jokes, okay? Hey, well, you know, I, I'm they stun send you. you. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sw- to, yeah, swarming I'm defense. You, I'm going to have to send you a text message this week, and you have to make sure we don't miss any. We're going to put a spreadsheet together with P jokes. Yeah, yeah, swarming, swarming defense. Uh, they they get hit waxed. the hive. Waxed. Forgot about the waxed. Well, actually, I don't know the hornets and... And be, but the bees, yeah, okay. Bees make wax. I don't yeah, know about wax. I don't know about yellow jackets. All right, well, no, no, mind, mind your beeswax, and uh, we'll talk to you then, okay? <laughs> that sounds good, Dennis, and uh, look forward to talking to you uh, early this week if we get to another episode of PFI put together. Uh, you got it, buddy. We'll talk to you then. Uh, sounds good. That is uh, Will Rab of WCDT.